Still a nation, what's going on, y'all? It's the morning after, and we got the dub. Yeah, it was kind of ugly towards the end, and it was some, it was some BS towards the end. Let's keep it real, but you can't hold a good team down, you can't hold a tough team down, and you can't stop T.J. Watt. You're, yo, man, the Pittsburgh Steelers win this game in overtime, twenty-three to twenty. Shout out to the Seattle Seahawks, man. It was a tough game. They made it tough in the second half. Um, prayers out for that guy. Uh, I don't want to get his name wrong, so I'm not going to say it. But the guy that went down yesterday, they had, they had to take him to the hospital and all that. You know, prayers out to him. Hopefully, he's able to recover from that. But in this game, man, we're going to kick it off. We didn't get a score until the second quarter. And that was a five-yard pass from Ben Roethlisberger to Najee Harris. The next, after that, you'll have um, another touchdown in that quarter. Eric Ebron, one-yard rush. Salute to him. We up 14 to zero. Then, third quarter, second half. It's crazy because coming out, Pete Carroll said that we need to run the ball. We need to establish the run. Mike Tomlin came out in the third half and said they're going to try to get the ball to their big guys, which is Lockett. Not, he's not a big guy, but they're big-name guys like Lockett and D.K. Metcalf. So you actually seen that play out. Uh, Mike Tomlin was prepared for what he said. Pete Carroll was prepared for what he said. And the Seahawks completely took the third quarter. Completely took the third quarter. Um, Alex Collins... Started getting hot. Pittsburgh Steelers fans, we know him. He played for the Ravens. Alex Collins ended up having a 100-yard game based off of that third quarter. I don't know how many yards he had in that third quarter, but, yeah. But uh, he had a – Alex Collins had a two-yard rush, touching, rushing touchdown that made it 14-7. to seven. After that, a little bit in the third quarter, we was able to get a little drive going. And we ended up getting a field goal. Shout out to Boss. It won't be his first. It won't be his last. I mean, excuse me, that was his first. But <laughs> it wouldn't be his last. Next, the Seahawks, uh, Will Dizzy. Dizzy? He is Dizzy here. After, you know, what happened at the end of the game. You got to be a little Dizzy at the end of that. Um, he had a one yard pass, touch, one yard catch <laughs> from Geno Smith. Who didn't play bad? Geno Smith was, he showed that he's a vet. He showed he's a true vet and a solid backup in the game right now. Probably one of the top backups in the game right now. He, he played solid yesterday. The fourth quarter, that's when it was the field goal parade. <laughs> we, did, we had no more touchdowns in this game, y'all. All field goals. You had Myers with a 40-yard field goal. Boswell with a 52-yard field goal. Then the controversy. The DK Metcalf, was it a catch? Was it a fumble? I felt like it was so clear that it shouldn't, the game should have never got stopped. The game should have never got stopped. And it, we should have landed on triples. I mean, excuse me, on quadruple zeros because, you know, zero, zero, then zero, zero. Yeah, but... We should have landed on that, man. I don't know what happened. But after 30 minutes of bullshit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We pretty much win overtime. We lose a coin toss. I'm not going to lie. When we lost the coin toss, I said, hmm. But I was like, yo, our defense wasn't terrible today. Our defense is not terrible at all. We have a solid defense, a top defense, a championship level defense. If we have this right supporting cast around them. So I was like, okay, let's go. It's time to work. And boy, was it some work. It was this guy named TJ Watt. Shut it down. Shut it down. That man forced two fumbles today. Well, you know what? Let me get the right stats for him. But salute to the offense, man. Ben Roethlisberger, 29 of 40 for 200. Uh, he threw 40 times, but it wasn't a bad 40 times. I wasn't mad at it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, 25, 29 of 40, 229 yards, one touchdown, no pick. Only got sacked once. 
Only got sacked once, man. Najee on the ground, 24 carries for 81 rushing yards, no TDs. But he also had six catches for 48 yards and a touchdown. So Najee, another strong day for Najee as far as workload. He touched the ball 30 times, man. Deontay Johnson, he had a 25-yard run. Salute to him on that one, on that nice reverse. I like those type of plays, man. But he was targeted 13 times yesterday, last night, for nine catches, 71 yards, no TDs. Shout out to Pat Fry move. Did he not go off? He didn't have 100 yards, but you would think so how many receptions he had. Seven targets for seven receptions for 58 yards, man. That's a guy that we need to continue to keep involved, like keep evolving in our offense, man. Him and even shout out to Eric Ebron, man. He made a couple good catches. He had two targets for two catches, good catches, and on top of that, he had the running touchdown. I like those type of plays right there, man. I saw a lot of, hmm, let's open the playbook now. It seems like the offense is building on that chemistry from last week and maybe even the Green Bay loss to some degree. Looks like they're building on it. The offensive line wasn't as good as last week, but I don't think they were bad either. I just You have the credit just the way Pete Carroll and the Seahawks was able to put a game plan together to really stop the run. And they didn't really stop the run. You know, like I said, we had over 100 yards rushing. So, salute to the guys on offense. James Washington came in. He had one catch. He set it off. He, I believe he had the first catch. He set it off. So, salute to James Washington. He ain't had no more catches, no more targets. But that's only going to grow from here. Ray Ray McLeod had two catches, two targets. You know. So, there was a couple guys that was, like, really working. Najee, Pat Fryer move, uh, Deontay Johnson. Those guys was getting targeted a lot, and Chase Claypool. But Chase, Chase had seven targets and he had two receptions, man. So they they was tight on Chase, and some of it wasn't. Ben missed Chase on probably like two of those things, but you can't get too mad about that, man. On defense, it was the man T.J. Watt. Like I said, I had to get the offense out of it. Offensively, I would like to say I would like to give the offensive game ball to. I'm going to have to give it to Najee again, man. Granted, like I said, he didn't do too good on the ground. But, well, 24 for 81 ain't too bad. You know, that's about a little under four yards, maybe a carry. Um, who knows, man? Hold on. Matter of fact, let me see if I can just pull that out right now. So I ain't just guessing. You don't want me to guess I are still in the nation, though. No? Well, all right, I ain't, I ain't getting there. <laughs> but anyway, man, I think Najee on the ground and blocking and receiving he was just a total package man you have to salute a, a close second would be probably big ben but he did fumble on <laughs> trying to be big ben i'm not too mad about that fumble because more often than not i want to say 9.5 times out of 10 big ben he ain't dropping that thing you know he's gonna be able to pump fake that and keep it going but sack, 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 loose to the guy. C.J. Watt, like I said, he had two sacks, causing um, a forced fumble to pretty much end the game in overtime. You know, we ended up getting Boswell to kick the field goal, and that was it. And Alex Highsmith, strong day, 1.5 tackles. Uh, I mean, excuse me, sacks. Chris Wormley had a .5, so him and Alex Highsmith shared one. Cam Harrell with one. Past deflections, TJ had three of them things. Chris Wormley had one of them things. Trey Norwood, let's talk about him. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Trey Norwood, still in the draft. Seventh round draft pick. Making plays every week. Every week, man. Seventh round draft pick, man. I don't know how what it is about DBs, wide receivers, I don't know, man. We could just find them type of guys. Trey Norwood, when we drafted him, I was, I, when I was analyzing, you know, the tape and everything about him and noticing how bad his defense was, and like the defense he played on, it wasn't too good. So I can kind of see how he fell in the draft. But if you look at his highlights and the, his pro plays, I didn't watch the con plays, but his pro plays was like, whoa, okay. 
all right, he might be able to fit. And the fact that he was versatile, too. You know Mike Tomlin loved them versatile um, DBs. And the fact that we have him playing in a position where it's like, dude, just make a play. That's all you out there to do, make a play. And he'll make a play. And salute to Arthur Millette because they kind of share that role. And, boy, Trey Norwood to be a seven-round draft pick. Really, those type of guys don't make the team, you know? So, salute to him, man. Salute to him. And with that being said, I think it's obvious who the game ball goes to on the defense. It's T.J. Watt. It's T.J. Watt. And it's T.J. Watt. I don't have to say it again. It's T.J. Watt. And it's your man, Kevin. We're going into the bye week, 3-3, three and three, 500. We're right in the ship, y'all. Zach Banner might be back on our next game going against the Browns. Might have Carlos Davis coming back. No, we might have Anthony um, McFarlane. We may have news on Stefan too. We don't know. The bye week works miracles, man, and I believe that we're going to take advantage of it. The young guys need it. The older guys need it. Excuse me. The young guys, they need it in the sense of looking how the season went so far, how can they improve going forward. The older guys, they just need it because they're older guys, man. Let them rest. And I feel like week seven, granted, uh, we, we have 17 weeks. No, excuse me, 18 weeks. Week seven isn't a bad bye week. It's not a bad time to have a bye week because you have a good enough sample size to analyze what's been going on, what you need to fix. And the fact that we kind of was able to fix certain things before the bye week was like this bye week is it's essential, but it's not like, oh, my gosh, we really needed this. It's like we can really use this, man. I feel like we're going to be able to take advantage of it. So salute the Steeler Nation, man. We got another one. Bye week is no football. But don't worry, because on Wednesday, the Steelers for 7 podcast, episode 74, will drop, man. It don't matter if it's a bye week, high week, low week, left week, white, right week. It We're going to get it. We're going to get it, man. We're going to keep this thing going, man. But it's your man, Kev Easy. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. And if you want to get into it, everything else. The link is in the description box. It's the Venture Season Network, y'all. Get in tune. Holla. Still a nation. Yes. It is over, man. It is over. The losing streak is over. This your man, Cap Easy. It's the morning after.